So, hi. Who are you? Jeremy Abbott. Uh, so, where, what do you do? I work at Google, the creative evangelist. So, uh, <laughs> where, where do you live? Live in Hamburg, Hamburg, Germany. What does it mean to be a creative evangelist? In uh, an ad agency? Or at Google? Yeah, at Google. Basically, that means taking the taking what they offer, what the engineers have, and applying it differently. So, does that mean that you know everything about Google? Uh, that means I know enough to make make cool things. API. Uh, API is the most interesting, in my opinion. Yeah. So, an API is when uh, Google has some. For example, Google has some awesome technologies that provide some tricks for developers to do to use it, right? Right. Yeah. Exactly. Basically, they have uh, they have a data sets or any you know, and then you and programmers can get into it actually access their data um, and use use it however they want to use it. It's like so, Play-Doh. So, can you try to explain how much work is it for uh, a team at Google to release the API for something? Is it um, kind of like huge kind of it's a it's a lot, thing? yeah it's a lot of effort. Um, it's definitely more than one man. Because as soon as you write software, then you have to make it work for different cases where you didn't think it would work before. So it's a lot of work, yeah. So for example, Google Plus has been in the works for like two years. Right. There's, uh, there's, there's some stuff going on, but it's still kind of limited. And yeah. I think, just, like, really oh, I mean, Google tried social before. And um, I think they're learning from their mistakes. And I think that's one thing nice about Google. They know how to learn from their mistakes. So now they're, Google Plus is a lot bigger than the thing they did before. So they're being a little bit more cautious. So um, what do you do here at the next web? Conference, uh, I gave a, a talk on creative. So how do you use uh, creative technology? So what do you say? Basically, it's, it's about how do you create an environment or a company that uh, can be creative. So there's basically a few things. There's place, there's people. And then the third one was place, I have to think about that, place people and process. Process. Yeah. So what kind of things, uh, how, how long have you been at Google? Just uh, since January. Since January. Total crush. What, what were you doing before? Before I make, uh, even now I make things, but before I got to Google because I made a lamp and the lamp was based on my location and GPS. So the lamp sits in front of my dining room table around right above it so when I'm at home it's lower and when I'm further away the further I'm the higher and higher it raises and then it orientates itself also like a compass so if I'm more north then it'll point more north and south and, and stuff like that so that's the kind of stuff I do I like to hack things like north from your house or yeah north, north from, from the, the house inside the, the yeah, yeah so the base is, is the house so if I'm more north then it'll, the lamp will rotate more north if I'm more south it'll rotate south and then the further away I go then it'll be higher and the closer I am, it'll be lower. What, kind, what do you call this kind of product, project? Um, I call it uh, making digital physical, or making things, making the digital tangible. So that's like a physical technology, what do you call it? Uh, the, uh, the manifestation, well, there's a bunch of things. I mean, there's a prototyping board, so I use Arduino, and then there's a bunch of sensors and actuators that I use, and then obviously the data, which is software. Arduino is awesome, no? Arduino is great, yeah. Massimo is a good guy. Yeah. How awesome is it? It is so awesome that my kids use it, and they're four and six. What can they do with it? They like to play with the servos and uh, try out different LEDs and stuff like that. It's like the modern day Lego. How much is Google doing to improve Arduino? Uh, Google has, since Arduino is open source, and Google is also a big proponent of open source, they actually released um, some stuff at I.O. last year and the year before. So a prototyping board based on Arduino. So they're very, very up, up on with but it. But I'd like to see a lot more because we saw the old Android at home. Yeah, exactly. Kind of like an announcement. Yeah. Some boards, a little bit like small stuff. Released. Yeah. But I'd like to see like uh, something huge. Yeah, I think, I think that's definitely not their core business. I think it's going more and more in this direction when, when physical, uh, digital becomes more physical. So if you think about glass and driverless cars, and all those take like a lot more resources. Whereas Arduino is release stuff and then see what the community does with it. So there's lots of creative stuff going on Yeah. with Google. Google is very creative. Yeah. And that's why anyway. I'm there. That's my title, Creative Evangelist. So I'm trying to show people what can you do creatively with Google. Most 
Google engineers are doing something creative, no? Definitely, yeah. Except maybe a few lawyers or, I don't know. That's yeah. also creative, I yeah. guess. Yeah, uh, I think you, can, you have to be creative, especially with IP. Yeah, you have to think of all kinds of lawsuits. Definitely, like or how to, how to, how to yeah, counter lawsuits or, um, I, that's policy, so that's not really my domain. So, Google Glass, it's yeah. awesome. I think it has potential to be awesome, yeah. I think everyone, obviously Sergey and the whole team think it's really awesome. Um, in Germany, it's not so awesome because Germany has a history and that is hindering the, the innovation here. So that's why in Germany you don't see much as far as Google Ads and privacy and the whole stuff, yeah. Yeah, I got a, a little talk with the Wi-Fi sniffing thing. Yeah. Maybe it was a mistake. Yeah. But we, we want Google to sniff Wi-Fi because it accelerates our positioning in the phone. Right. I but can't really, I mean, there, yeah, I mean, I can't really talk about uh, yeah. past mistakes or policy issues, but I know that the more we're open to trying new things and, and thinking about opt-in instead of opt-out, then um, the more we're going to have a better experience. So, can you explain a little bit more, what kind of work can you do? So basically what I do is, as a creative evangelist, my whole goal is to, to exactly show what I what we just talked about is how can you do creative things with Google. So that involves doing keynotes like here, uh, giving presentations, doing workshops, working on pitches for clients like uh, you know like big brands, and then obviously just uh, going out and meeting people and talking about Google. So the technology world is so cool. It's awesome. And, yeah. uh, some of the things are happening. Uh, I don't know what can, what can I ask? Like it's like. Uh, what is Google's role in this planet? Yeah, I mean, they, well, they have a thing called Solve for X, and that's that's all about the moonshot. So the moonshot is in, in 1969 when when the USA uh, went to the moon, you know, in the big space race. So the, I think the whole goal there is to see instead of thinking 10% better, how can we think 10 times better? And that then you come up with things like Google Glass, the computer-driven car, and other moonshots. So anything's possible, but is it sensible? You know, does it doesn't make sense? Is it worth it? So I think that's what that's what Google's thinking about. We don't see so many moonshots with uh, any company. Like there yeah, right. needs a special company to have people allowed to get spend their time trying to do something Definitely. crazy. And that was part of my talk. How do you create a company that allows for risk, that has a great culture that that means you can take risk and you can fail sometimes? You have to have a culture where the people are there and that the obviously the environment has to be there. And all those other parts, you know, the culture is number one in a company. I think the 20% time is, is an awesome idea. Do you have it already yourself in the few months you're there? 20% um, is um, not something that I personally have to do because I think my job is so cool that I don't really need the 20% to do something it's super optional. cool. Uh, it's optional, definitely. So you don't have to do something that no. else? No, no, definitely, yeah. But if you think about all the 20% jobs, even before I was at Google, the 20% projects at Google, they're all PR projects, and, and now they're all great projects. Gmail, Maps, all those were at, at one point 20%, and that's the stuff that really gets people excited. So what I what I what I like to see is a government or all companies do the same. Yeah, I think, but that you go back to your thing. You know, how do you create a a, a company that's worth uh, that's worth working for and has a culture that allows for that? And there's not many that do that, but. It, as we see with open source and transparency and then internet being basically like water, I think companies are going to have to open up. People should see at Google's balance sheet and say this is a good idea. It's Let's huge. Do it, yeah, right? I mean, revenue solves a lot of problems. If you have the right revenue, then you have you solve a lot of problems. I mean, it's proven. It works. It's proven, so yeah. So why doesn't every company do it already? I think a lot of companies are based on legacy. So if you take uh, telecom, telecom is based on a really strong hierarchy on being a monopoly, basically. So they did things the way they wanted to do things. They didn't think about the user. And they and that's why you don't have that culture there. So you're in Hamburg. Uh, how big is Hamburg? Google Hamburg's uh, 1.8 million people about. But how many Googlers there? Oh, Googlers, there's like three, almost 340, I think. And uh, is it uh, similar to every other Google office in the world? No, every Google office is different for based on their culture. So Hamburg is a little more Hanseatic, which means it's a little more um, I'm uh, not serious, but somehow a little, it feels a little more German. I don't know how to describe that, but more orderly versus the Dublin office is very young. So the average age in Dublin is probably like 26 or 28. So they feel, it feels a little more young somehow. So each office has its own, it takes in the local culture and brings it into the office. All right. But uh, uh, so 
I guess it's cool. You've been uh, walking around the Google offices and looking around. Yeah, and, uh, I've been to I've been to a few offices, and I, they're all very cool. Is I mean, it they're as all cool inspiring. As the documentaries on YouTube, or it's definitely cool. It's cooler. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely cooler. Cooler than a lot of ad agencies, and ad agencies are supposed to be creative. And um, somehow, you need a great environment to be creative, and, and Google makes it happen. But do all the employees at Google, do they feel a pressure to perform, to do something uh, that people say is good, or people feel some kind of freedom and feel like on a holiday every day, or not really? Yeah, I think that, that has to do with the company as well. How do you create a great company? You have to have a great vision. And I think uh, Google does have a great vision. Um, and in that regard, people come to a company because of the culture. In the end, you know, obviously you're going to come there and for the money, but you aren't going to stay for the money. You're going to stay for the culture. And uh, the Internet of Things, uh, how soon? It's already happening. The future is here. It's just not evenly distributed by Gibson, right? So uh, some crazy things are happening. Are going to happen for sure. Yeah, let's let's talk in two years. Let's All see right. what happens.